to Iran Travel Guide. We are here today with another chapter of this program for you. Yes, it's great to have you back and we've got many exciting things as always. We'll be taking you around the culture, the history, the politics, the food, all of Iranian life. And the nature. And nature, of course. And today we are in the city of Shiraz. The city of gardens, of poetry, of love and romance. And one of the most beautiful places in the country. Absolutely. Tourists come here in their droves every year to see the sights from ancient Persepolis to the gardens all around the city to the shrines of various uh, relatives of the Imams. And what you can see in the back of us, it is called the Gate, Quran Gate. That was a Quran. So we're here in the city of Shiraz, city of love, poetry, romance, and all sorts of history that bounds here. Tourists come here in their drove to see the sights. We've met, we're going to be meeting some in the, in the gardens, in the mosques, and in the ancient history, historical sites such as Persepolis and Nakhche Rostam. And what you see in the background, it is called Darwaz Quran, the Gate of Quran, which is one of the most important sites of this city. Yes, a gate has stood on this site, guarding the northern entrance to the city for centuries. The one you see behind us is a modern reconstruction made in the 20th century. But there is a room on top, you may be able to see, which has a very special purpose. And that purpose is to keep a Quran there. So people would come here and pass through the gate to get blessed and be protected by the Quran. Everyone who would be coming from the other cities north of here, such as Isfahan, the ancient capital, would have had to pass this way and be reminded of their faith. As they would pass, they would read verses from the Quran inscribed upon the walls and know that they were entering a holy city. And what you can see on the both sides of the gates are the two most important mountains in this city. On this side we have Babakui Mountains and on the other side we have Chael Maram Mountains. These formed a natural pass whereby all travelers had to come through this way. They also meant that militarily the city was safe from invasion from this direction. So maybe you want to come with us and have a look close at this wonderful place and be with us with the rest of this wonderful city. Enjoy Shiraz with us as we take you to the sites. Thank you and come along. Let's go. Let's go.
Hello and welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here today with you from north of Iran in a very magical place, yes. Kisum Forest. Yes, we've been here all day and we've been looking around and really enjoying the nature here. Iran's famous for its deserts but also has some beautiful forests, especially in the north. This forest is situated on the edge of the Caspian Sea where the mountain forests, the alpine forests, meet the forest, uh, meet the, uh, the seashore. And that is what makes it magical. And apart from that, another very important thing about this forest is that you can find different species of plants here, mm -hmm. which you might not be able to find it anywhere else. No, there are lots of endemic species to here, some of which have been here since, for thousands of years, we know by the fossil records. We also know that this coastal plain here, because of its unique environment where the hot air meets the cold, is home to all sorts of trees, some of which you can't find anywhere else in the world. And homes for lots of different types of animals and birds that you can hear them in the background. Yes, birds are famous for stopping over here on their migratory routes, sometimes coming from Europe or Russia, going to Africa or South Asia. So be with us, have a look around this beautiful place. We're going to show you some of this wonderful forest. Thank you so much. Kind of uh, reminds me of Africa. This does. Yeah. In what sense? The national parks there. It's a totally different mm. environment. They're very different species. Yeah, but for me, you know, like forests are always very special. Mm -hmm. No, the peace you get inside them is worth a lot. You know, just this way we're able to get away from the rush of, of the cities and find our way into nature. Yeah. And look at the, look at the body of the tree. Mm. Covered in moss and lichen. Mm. It's very magical. They're quite tall. Yeah, I mean, some of these will be 100 years old at least. It feels like this forest has been very uh, you know, not touched by any mm, people. Well preserved. Yeah, well preserved.
Hi and welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here in the city of Mashhad, but we want to introduce something very special, very different to you, something you might have not heard about the country of Iran. No, it's uniquely Iranian where we are now. It's a very special place and it's a kind of sport or varzesh, but not sport in the traditional sense in that there's no winner here. This sport, which is the most traditional sport of this country, is called Varzesh Bastani, which means the ancient sport. It has the history of 7,000 years old behind it. Yes, the, this sport is practiced by people of all ages, from very young to very old. And because of its non-competitive nature, its collaborative nature, you can, these people can work together and indeed play together. There's not many sports in the world where the object is a collaborative one instead of a competitive one. And that means that here is really a sense of community, a sense of togetherness, which is the most important thing about the sport. There are some elements that makes this, uh, this sport very special and separated from all the other type of sports. First of all is the importance of using music in this sport. Music and the sport, both of them come along each other. Each one give emphasis on the other one. The, the people who do the sport have to follow the rhythm of the master who plays on the seat you can see in the back seat, who plays the music with the drum and there is a bell. So they have to follow the master, they have to uh, arrange their movements and their body to the rhythm of the music he plays. Indeed, following the music here is part of the overall concept of the sport, which is one of humility. You do not come to show off here. Despite the sport requiring great strength and great skill, it is not a question of being the best or showing off. It is a question instead of humbling yourself to the music, to the atmosphere and to your fellow participants. Another thing which makes it very special is the using of literature in this sport. The master who plays the music, at the same time he sings songs. And these songs are not any normal songs. These are the old poems of this country. You might have definitely heard about Ferdowsi or Hafez or Khayyam or different poets, the ones who talk about humility, the, who talk about being humble, who talk about respect. And all these poems have been used to keep singing and keep repeating for the people who are here and doing the sport. Yes, the sport indeed does teach morality as well as strength, fitness and a good life. It does this through the use of the music, through the use of the poems, but also through the use of a set of rules. When you enter the, the Zor Hane or the, the house of the sport, you must bow, you must indeed humble yourself physically as well as mentally. And you have to abide by a series of rules while in here these rules also take place outside. So the idea is that you learn how to behave well here and then take it out into the world. The concept of I here doesn't have any meaning. When you're here, there's no I, it's us, it's all of us together. So you should forget about all those concepts. You should see others as your friends, as your companions. In the court, in the main court, the people do sport together from five years old child who can stand next to a 95 years old man and stand together at the same time and sport. They learn to be together and to respect each other. Yes, this respect is so important and it's the sort of thing which made places like this and the people who came from them leaders of the communities and moral guidance, separate from religion, that guided the communities and showed people the right way. These people had a special name, they were called Pahlavans. And these Pahlavans were the people who had the uh, highest morality here, the people who were the most humble people here and kind of, you know, a kind of person who always were respected by the, the society and other people. 
who like if there was any problem with the families in the society in the neighborhood everyone would come to the pahlavan and ask for his advice for his help and he was the one who would take care of the poor people in the area and lots of other things beautiful traditions and beautiful history behind it and these traditions still survive to this day they had their form really hasn't changed much over the huge history that they have and indeed to go into a Zorkhane a hundred years ago and to go into one today would give you a very similar experience. This is important for the communities as we've mentioned, but also it's so interesting to compare to other sports. When you look at, say, a footballer, a millionaire who's you know, a model of the community, there are some, of course, but a lot of them do not share that same role. Here, togetherness, community, respect, humility all go together to forge this uniquely Iranian sport. We might say that this is a sport only for men, but the truth is that this sport was kind of founded by women. The women who wanted to teach all this concept to their children and brought their, uh, their children here in these places and get, uh, started to teach them these concepts. And then slowly, slowly this concept developed and reached to what we are here today. Yes, so we've told you a lot about it and we're going to now show you a little bit about it. You have a look around the place here. The architecture of this place is amazing. And each individual Zohane has a different sort of style to it, a unique style from both the region and the tradition that it comes from. Then after that, we're going to have a look at some of the equipment that's used in the sport. It may seem a bit strange at first. You may not have seen anything like this. It's not like volleyball or football, which you've seen before. This is very different. But we're going to give you a little bit of explanation about how they're used and the purposes they serve as well as what they symbolize. So join us in after some time to see some details of the equipments here. Mm -hmm. Great.